There you are, you're welcome back. And let's take another stab at that gold story. A document has cited Ghana as the main transit point for the illicit shipment of gold. Uh, the document is the State of Illicit Economy Africa Report, uh, which uh, was presented at the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement Convention, which is underway in Cape Town, South Africa. Now, you probably have heard of an investigative piece by Al Jazeera, which recently stoked debate about how some Ghanaian officials could be complicit in activities of money laundering for a group of mafia controlling the gold industry here in Africa. Now, in spite of a fierce rebuttal from uh, some government sources around the president who was mentioned in the report, a new investigative report is suggesting that Ghana is becoming a hotspot for illicit gold activi activities. Uh, Blessed Soka joins us now. Blessed, I think we've fixed that problem now. Uh, we can hear you. Why don't you talk us through uh, the details of this report? Uh, well, Koji, if you can hear me now, uh, yeah. officially, as we know it, uh, gold worth at least uh, 22.8 uh, to somewhere 23.45 billion U.S. dollars actually leaves the African continent and uh, not just Africa, uh, but also Latin America each year. Now, we do know that out of this estimate, from what the report is telling us, and I need to state that this uh, report uh, was released uh, just as we pointed out yesterday by Original. Original is a safety standard uh, based organization uh, that is uh, focused on ensuring that the right things are done in terms of trading of goods and services. And this is a report released as of April 2023. So it's the latest report coming through on the state of the illicit economy, talking about how uh, there's money laundering on the continent and also illicit activities happening all across. And now the focus for today uh, is on the extractive sector. Mm. So as I was pointing out earlier, 23.45 billion official is what we know as the total amount of receipt uh, of uh, the amount of gold uh, that is, uh, of course, valued from the African continent and also Latin America each year. Uh, but what's shocking in this report is that out of this total amount that we're recording, an estimate of some 55 to 60 percent, as much as 50, 60 percent of the gold mined on these two continents, that's Africa and on the Latin American soil, is, guess what, considered illegal. Now, look gold refineries, as uh, the report is pointing out, are being mm. extensively used to launder gold from uh, illicit sources in an artisanal mining sector involving several millions of people. And we do know that that's very prevalent in Ghana. There's also the point about forced labor and the high risk associated with all of that. Uh, it's coming in the wake of uh, the reports that we've seen, for instance, from international media, uh, such as Al Jazeera, which is pointing out to some gold mafia, uh, which is uh, predominant on the African continent. This report appears to be backing that, pointing to the fact that illicit gold mining is becoming a rising source of income for guess what? what? Could you? Cartels, criminals, criminal gangs and non-state armed groups as well, uh, with the mineral sector averaging about 17% of the global threats and conflict finance compared to drug. So it's mm. reaching very close to drug. Drug is just uh, accounting for around 27%. So it tells you how close and how rising uh, the illicit gold uh, movement or shipment uh, cartel or mafia is growing across the African uh, continent. And it's coming together with some uh, impact on the economy of these countries that are gold producing countries. For instance, the, uh, there's the associated problem of capital flights um, where, of course, these African rich countries, re resource rich countries, are, uh, of course, uh, making exports of some 35 billion. Uh, however, uh, if you look at what's happening, we're not deriving the benefits that we should be taking uh, from this uh, mining sector. And why can't, for instance, if you take a look at the map which is released by the uh, State of the Illicit Economy report uh, by Originelle, it appears that Ghana is becoming a safe transit point. So you have safe destination points, which I have in the report with me now, uh, and safe transit points. On the map, what we see is that Ghana, for instance, is a safe transit point. So uh, illegal gold is being shipped out of our country to the likes of Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, It goes round in circles. Uh, it appears that part of the destination, according to this report, 
Part of them is uh, Qatar. We also have uh, the United Arab Emirates. And there are some that are flowing from somewhere central and southern Africa, moving into the likes of India. Uganda on the continent appears to be uh, also another spot that was pointed out. And if you look at this whole map, um, Uganda and Ghana appear to be the two most identified safe transit points for illegal gold trading. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, where, of course, a lot of eyebrows are being raised about what's happening in our country, looking at the fact that there are recent reports pointing out uh, that some government element um, may have some ties to this cartel. It's been denied by the government, uh, but of course, given what's coming up in this report now, there are lots of questions to be answered. Mm. And it was actually the president who was mentioned uh, in this report, and the denial has come from um, the president's legal counsel, who tweeted that the president knows nothing about uh, those allegations. Um, all right, now, um, Blessed, I think it's quite clear that whatever this illegal gold is, much of it is going to be the, the output of Galamsi, illegal mining, uh, because there is no, it doesn't match our records of how much gold we export. Uh, I remember famously in 2018, the vice president, during a meet the press at uh, Jubilee House, actually said on a trip to Dubai, he was told that Dubai receives about $6 billion worth of gold from Ghana. Uh, but Ghana's total gold exports for that year was $2 billion. That's total, not just to Dubai. So what does this report say about the destinations of this illicit gold? Have they been able to trace where this gold pops up across the globe? Uh, well, that's an interesting perspective you're bringing up, Kujo, because uh, in this report, what we find uh, to be very clear is that uh, all of these companies that we're talking about uh, typically involved in this illicit trade of uh, gold uh, appear to be paying only zero to four percent of tax mm. on official amounts. So it points out to the fact that we're having serious revenue leakages, mm. um, which is in turn impacting the Ghanaian economy. Because if you have a country such as Ghana, which is one of the highest deposits, uh, or I mean, exporting countries of gold, you would expect that ordinarily. Uh, out of this uh, 23 plus billion US dollar economy in terms of gold, we'll, we'll definitely be having 60% or 50% market share. So if we're supposed to derive the benefits, the benefits should be uh, in high returns. But you, mm. due to this illicit activities that are happening, what you find is that the country is losing out on revenue, as being pointed out in this report, that the re revenue rate Mm. It's just between zero to four percent of the time, and it's a reason for which um, these civil society organizations believe that a lot of steps and measures ought to be taken to address the concerns that are, are being identified in in this uh, document. But I must point out, uh, just to state on records, that no government official has been uh, cited in this report, except to say that it is increasingly. Uh, becoming of concern to mm. these organizations that Ghana, as we're finding on the map, is becoming a safe transit point mm. for these illicit uh, gold activities. And, mm. and uh, what's instructive in this report is that they talk about the artisanal mining sector, which means that in the small scale mining sector, there's a lot of problem that we need to deal with. Mm. Uh, many would say, well, I mean, the report uh, and its findings goes to the heart of the concerns that the average Ghanaian has mm. about illegal mining and what's happening in the small mining sector. Um, mm. So clearly, if there's a, a need for us to focus there, that, that's what we need to pay attention to. To first of all, track what's happening. Mind your government is running the gold for oil deal. Mm. And once we're running that policy, uh, some unscrupulous individuals may want to take advantage of that because, mm. mind you, uh, what's coming from the main and multinationals or the large-scale mining sector can be trapped, mm. except to say that what's happening in the small-scale sector is where there is a lot of problems. Yeah. So, indeed, that's, uh, of course, part of the concerns that this report is raising, mm. uh, asking that, of course, governments pay attention to what's happening in their country yeah. and how there's a, a sharp rise mm. or a growing cartel of mm. persons trading 
and illicit uh, gold uh, across the continent. That's a very important distinction you made there. Of course, there are two reports we're discussing here. The first one being the one that uh, uh, was reported at the APTA convention, the one that you are briefing us on. Uh, but also the story makes reference to the Al Jazeera report uh, where the president was uh, mentioned. And of course, the denials have come from the president's uh, council. So important uh, to make that well, distinction well, there. Uh, to... The Al Jazeera incident uh, mm. is, is, yes, precisely yeah. as we're pointing yeah. out, is, is very different, uh, different from what's happening absolutely. here. Because obviously, um, yeah. Yes, the, the reports that we have was by an independent media mm. organization. Yes. However, this state of the illicit uh, economy report mm. is simply bringing out issues mm. relating to what's happening, for instance, in our mining sector. Yeah. You cannot talk about mining on the African continent without mm. referring to what's happening in Ghana, for instance. Mm. Yeah. And it's part of the reasons why, of course, uh, the group is raising some key concerns about uh, what the potential threat may be um, to our economy. Mm. Um, so, for instance, uh, there's, there's this uh, revelation coming through now that when this cartel or this criminal gang that's operating on the African continent grabs the cash, they use that to finance illicit activities and also some extremist groups. Mm. And so that in turn, of course, brings about national security threats, mm. uh, a reason for which they believe uh, that our state mm. authorities must begin to act and to crack down on the small uh, mining sector and to ensure that the system is sanitized, sanitized to the extent that we are able to, first of all, track what's moving out of the continent mm. and how much we're getting in revenue or royalties, as you would want to call them, right. to the state. Because that's our main business as a country, to ensure that whatever resource we are mining, uh, of course, it benefits the average Ghanaian. That, that's, yeah. that's the end story. Mm. So, obviously, you have had the opportunity to interact with the private sector players at this after convention where this report um, was, uh, the, the details of this report were shared. Tell me, uh, what role is the private sector seeing uh, in, in providing solutions to this um, massive, uh, you know, uh, leakage of revenue to government uh, uh, through, through the, the illicit uh, transportation of gold through countries like Ghana? Mm. Uh, well, uh, uh, just as we were pointing out yesterday, it's just not Ghana. There are a number of countries also facing this uh, similar challenge. And beyond the extractive sector, uh, you find that same challenge happening in the pharmaceuticals, which we were discussing yesterday. Of course, you had Mark G from Original uh, telling you about how widespread the problem is and the need for urgent action. Uh, it does suggest that there's a bigger problem about standards on the African continent. The fact that we're indeed trading, but we're bending the rules in terms of how we trade. So uh, the recommendation here is that we need to, first of all, harmonize our standards and our protocols on how we trade. And if we do have the standards and the protocol, clear ones on how we have to go about trade, indeed we'll be on the lookout for some, quote, African standards which would then set the guide, set the tone on how we can do business. Uh, because mind you, whatever happens in Ghana, in the mining sector, would obviously have uh, a bearing on what's happening in South Africa and its mining sector, for instance. Mm. So that's why there's a, a big push for standards and to ensure that before we go ahead with this intra-African trade, all of these bottlenecks must be dealt with. Because mind you, in West Africa, where we find ourselves, there's this prevent, for instance, uh, these cartels and these criminal organs taking over our small scale mining sector and feeding their extremist groups uh, with the cash that they grab. For instance, uh, a country like Ghana cannot claim to be safe. For instance, uh, you, you heard from the president when he attended the US Africa summit pointing out that a mine has been given. Uh, reportedly, we're not in a position to independently verify that. Uh, a mine was given to the Wagner Group, uh, which has been tagged as one of the mercenary groups operating a militia um, uh, base in our neighboring country. So if indeed this report is pointing out that when the cartel get the cash, they give it to the extremist groups, it does suggest that there is a problem that we are facing, not just in Ghana, but across the African continent, which needs to be dealt with so as to allow intra-Africa trade. And that's what's been resounding uh, throughout this uh, Africa continental free trade area uh, private sector. Mm. 
always a fountain uh, but could, of... Could you just, yeah. before we wrap up the conversation, I also need to point out that uh, a couple of minutes ago... Uh, yes, and, 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 and could you, if you can hear me? Uh, I yes, was just yes, uh, pointing out that a couple of minutes ago, uh, I was engaging the Secretary General uh, of the Continental Free Trade Area, and um, His Excellency Wam Kelly who spoke to me at length about a number of issues confronting even trading amongst African countries themselves. One of the key challenges that's come up has got to do with even our payment system and the inability of the continent itself to have one currency. Mm. In West Africa, we were moving into the uh, zone wealth because we wanted to have the equal uh, for the West African region. The convergence criteria has been a challenge for West Africa. It appears that that challenge has been transposed to the um, continental level, where, of course, it's inhibiting our ability to have uh, mm. a compromise to trade and to do business. So these are matters that, unfortunately, what, of course, will be business. Mm. Well, no doubt these are uh, hurdles that we're expecting that conventions like the one you're attending will uh, start the journey towards finding solutions for. Uh, Blessed, it's always a pleasure. A fountain of knowledge from this uh, South African event. We appreciate you very much indeed. And that's Blessed Sogar of Joy News, uh, who is uh, coming to us live, uh, as he has done every day this week, from Cape Town in South Africa.